Hi everyone and welcome back to the 12th episode of the Angular Spring Boot course. In the previous episode we discussed about Angular template driven forms. We saw how to use the ng model to create two-way data bindings between our inputs and our components. We saw how to use ng submit to send data to the backend and we also saw how to import you know the forms module for angular applications now in this episode you're going to cover form validation because this is really a very important topic if you talk about user experience now um from what i saw in customers uh, no client side validation will pretty much get you sad and angry users now of course, server-side validation is, you know, mandatory. That's a must. There is no discussion about that here. However, client-side validation tends to give your application, you know, user friendliness. I mean, if you have a large form of 20 fields and the user submits a button and he gets back a response from the server telling him that, you know, mm, something was wrong, that's not very helpful. So what we should do instead is complement our server-side validation with the client-side one so we can give our user instant feedback when he fills in form forms and this is exactly what we're going to do today in our for in our feedback component okay so in this episode we are going to see how to enable field validation so we're going to talk about required email you know mean length and then uh, after this course you can check out the other ones uh, we'll see how to enable and use form validation and now send invalid data back to the server. We'll talk a little bit about the Angular validation constructs because, you know, at first the syntax might seem a little bit strange, but, you know, once you start doing it, you know, it will seem less and less um, intrusive. And last but not least, we'll see it in action for our feedback component. Now, before we begin, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more software development courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Okay, we are back in our feedback component and we're taking a look at the feedback components template. Now, this is how we left it in the previous episode and now we want to enable validation. Now, because you're using template driven forms, most of the validation logic will be in the actual template. So, let's see how we can actually convert each and every field in here and add client-side validation to it. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to add in, you know, a few more um, attributes in here. So I'm going to, you know, copy paste them just to simplify things a little bit. So what we added, basically we added an alias for this input and that alias is uh, sharp and name and this alias will refer to the ng model. So if we want to grab the value of this input, we can then just use, um, you know, sharp name and we can use it in here. So like here, see, we have name.invalid and name actually refers to the model name, so to the ng model. And then we use this name alias inside here to simplify things. Okay. And then we have an ng class and we created the that data binding here. So we will apply the is invalid class if the form is submitted and the name is invalid. So uh, initially, uh, even though the fields are empty or you know there is nothing in there, uh, you, do, you will not get error messages. But once you click the submit button on the form, the form becomes submitted. And if the name is invalid, then we need to apply this class and this class basically puts a red border around the input so that's why we need two conditions because you actually need to trigger a form submission event first okay and now we're going to add in um you know our validation so uh, the properties that this field should respect in order for it to be valid in the case of name i'm just going to use the html required attribute so I've done this. Let's see what modifications this will make. And notice that I also added this here. So uh, before we add the validation on ng submit, we would just send feedback. 
but now I also want to check if the form is valid and only if the form is valid then call the send feedback method. So this is how it lets the form know that if it's not valid it should not send, it should not execute this method. And F again is an alias, we described it here, F refers to the ng form as a whole. Okay, so this is a little bit of the um, syntax I was telling you about uh, in the beginning of this episode. Now let's open our browser. Okay, we'll hit refresh. We see that you know all the form, all the elements appear to be valid because you did not submit the form. And now you know let, let's just leave an empty field here. Click send, and you immediately see that uh, now this field has a red border, and that's because you enabled validation. Also, if I pop up F12 and, you know, I look at the networking tab and I try to submit it again, you will see that there is no uh, request going from my application to the backend because uh, the form is submitted, the um, name field is invalid, so there is no actual transmission of data. Now, this looks very nice, but it would be nice to have a little message telling us you know what the problem is because we can apply multiple validations on a field we can have min length required email and so on and so forth and it would really help the user if he knew what he needed to correct to make this field valid and in order to do that after the input we can actually go here so after the input we can sorry we can create a div and this div needs to be in the form group div so the form group needs to be the parent for this one and let's add an ng if okay so ng if so if the form is submitted and the name is invalid so only then okay so we know this field is invalid and now we need to check what the actual error is so again i can use a div and i can use ng if okay so if the name has errors and one of those errors is that the field is empty so if the required validation did not pass, this is what you're basically saying here, then just write name is not valid, okay? So if the form is submitted and this input is invalid, uh, we render the outer div, and then in the inner div, we can check for individual uh, validation errors. So in here we would have individual validation errors and in here we have we basically have the uh, input validation uh, group group okay and let's see the output of this uh, in our application so again we reload it uh, we leave an empty name we click send it back and now we can see we have this nice little name here telling us that the name is invalid so we actually provided some pretty useful information to our user but you know it's black and i don't like it so i want to make it red so i'll define a style in the feedback component because i only need it here and it's going to be invalid input and the color it's going to be red okay and this way we can actually see we can actually take a look at the how component styles work so now this class is only available inside the feedback component it's a component level style but this means that if we render this div we can actually use the invalid input class in here and if i'm not mistaken now we should see send feedback and voila um, this error message is also um, read 
Okay, so we've implemented validation for the input, you know, the most basic validation required. Let's try to add in validation for the other fields as well. To validate the email field, uh, we need to make sure that this field is not empty and that this field is an actual email address. So uh, then at you know, gmail.com or something like that, or any other you know valid email combination. So again, I'll copy paste a little bit from here, you know, the validation syntax and we'll modify as we go. So now I will alias this field with email because that's what it represents. Uh, and then here again, email. So if the form is submitted and this email field, which is the ng model corresponding to this field is invalid, then I add the is invalid class or so the red border around this field. And now let's define what invalid means. So it means required and it also means that this uh, field should be a valid email address. So again, we're using standard HTML5 um, input validators. And like we did in here, now we need to add in a div, you know, to write what the validation errors were. And again, uh, we want to validate the email field. So if the email is invalid and now if it's required, then we'll write something like field is required. And if it's not an email, we'll write that the field is not a valid email. So again, I'm looking through these possible errors and I'm writing the corresponding message um, as needed. And you know, just for consistency, I'm going to write field is required here as well. Okay, so let's save it and let's see if we did this operation correctly. Okay, so let's try it in Firefox for a change. Close this one, feedback. Okay, and I want to send it. And you see that we get field is required, field is required. And if I put AAA, I still can't submit it because the field is not a valid email. So it looks like we're getting the hang of these validators. Uh, for the final one, the feedback, I would define validation as, uh, obviously it's a required field. And I would also like to have at least, you know, 10 characters because, you know, a valid feedback should contain more than, you know, two letters. It should be like a message for me. And I want to force the user to actually write me something meaningful. Okay, so again, we'll copy paste this just to speed things up a little bit. So feedback, sorry. Okay. And this is the feedback and we apply the red border if the form is submitted and the feedback input is not valid. Okay, I will define what valid means. So valid means required and a mean length of, you know, let's say 10 characters, okay? Okay. Let's close the text area. And after the text area, we will add in, you know, we'll copy paste this input validation group here in the form group div after the text area. And okay, we want to validate the feedback input and again here so feedback required and feedback uh, you know mean length or if the mean length property is um, is not correct then field is too small you know try 10 
characters. So uh, at this point, I hope I didn't miss anything. Okay, let's check it out. Again, we'll open the browser. And we try to send the feedback field is required. And now we type in three characters. Okay, we get this error. Uh, six, nine, ten, and now this feedback is required. And as we you know, add in appropriate things in here, um, the form becomes you know valid. There are no red markers, and we can actually send the feedback. So we saw that the feedback is sent, a request has been made, and then you know server side validation will kick in. Okay, so right now we have a noted application. We have the feedback component, we have validation, we have user input, we can send it to the backend. And we've covered some ground here with our Angular application. We learned the concepts. Now, in the following tutorials, we will build up uh, you know, on this knowledge and see how to build even more complex components and how to finish our application with the you know, core node functionality. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.